So a very warm welcome to all the participants who are interested in knowing more about yoga. This is the Swadhyaya Satra series. And the topic this time is the third chapter on Patanjali Yoga Sutras, Vibhuti Pad. But before we get into understanding of Vibhuti Pad, we have to try and understand why Swadhyay. And what does Swadhyay mean? What is yoga? Why Patanjali Yoga? And then to try and understand the details of this subject. So why is Swadhyay? And what is Swadhyay? If we observe a child, say six months to nine months or one year old child, the moment the child is given something or is it sees something, the first thing the child will do is try to grasp it and find out the shape. Next thing, immediately after grasping, first, almost the first instinct, let us say, is to put it in the mouth smell it and then it will try and do various other objects to try and see what is the use of that object for itself. The child is trying to utilize the five senses. In As a child, the sense of touch is predominant. Immediately after uh, touch is the sense of taste. Then the other senses come in. What is a child trying to do? The child is trying to perceive an external object and find its relevance or utility to its self. It is studying that object. It's extremely intent on that. It doesn't care for anything else in the world. That object is of prime importance. That is adhyayan, studying, understanding, intently, not just reading information. No. You have to internalize it, observe it, understand it through the five senses. Understand what it means to me, how it makes a difference in my life. Once we understand that, then we can implement it. But then that is Adhyayan. What is Swa in that? Swa. Swadhyay, Swa Adhyayan, Swadhyay. Swa means self. Self is the limited self or the cosmic self, whichever you can relate to. And you will realize that this is the study of the self, by the self, for the self. This S is the capital S of the transcendental self because I need to go there. In life, we have come to know either through our studies, through our experience or through different people that there is something more to life than what we see around. Our experiences also teach us that and this search for finding out more meaning to life than just the sensor sensorial impulses. That search leads us to find newer things. And yoga is the most important tool to be able to enable us Empower us in that search. Who am I? That is the eternal question. Am I this body? Am I this mind? Am I these emotions? Or am I something beyond that? That is something which has haunted humankind since ages. Our ancestors 
found a way that yes, there is something beyond the mind. And that something beyond the mind is the real definition of the self. Yes, I am the body also. How can I say I am not the body? When something is hurt, I feel the pain. So therefore, body is a part of me. A transient part, nevertheless a part. The emotions, the intellect, the mind, they are all a part of me. In the same way as the hand is a part of me. It is not me in totality, but it is a part, nevertheless. When I am driving a car, that is, car is a definition of me. If there is an accident to another car, I don't get disturbed. But the moment it happens to my car, I get disturbed. What does it mean that the definition of my includes the car? When I sell that car off, next day, I am not worried about if the car has an accident. Because now, that definition of my no longer includes that car. This body is a car. As long as we are in this body, this body is a part of I. But the body is not the end of the definition of I. I am more than just this body. So what am exactly I? When we start searching about this, then we need to have a practical approach to reach this. Because when I have been told that the I is beyond the mind, then I am in a catch-22 situation. I can perceive everything around the world or about myself only through the mind. The senses report to the mind and the mind conducts everything. Now, if I have to go beyond the mind, how can I use the mind to go beyond the mind? Seems very contradictory. But there is a way to go beyond the mind, using the mind. That is the path of yoga. And when we work on this path, then we come to know that there is something beyond. And how do we walk that path? How do we understand the mind? How do we decode the mind? The mind is a very mysterious object. Till date, nobody has been able to even specify where it exists. I know the brain exists here. I know my hand exists here. I know my heart exists here. I know my intestines exist here. But where does the mind exist? How? Oh, nobody knows. Somebody says the heart. Somebody says the brain. Somebody says everywhere. Somebody says beyond. Nobody knows for sure. Such a mysterious thing called mind. Maharshi Patanjali compiled the teachings which have been working around for many millennia and he presented them in a very concise, compact manner. And they are known as Patanjali Yoga Sutras. The definition of sutra is very specific. Swalpaksharam Asam Digdham Saravat Vishwato Jagat Astobham Anavadhyam Cha Sutram Sutra Vido Viduhu Swalpaksharam Very precise, minimum words Asam Digdham There is no ambiguity Saravat Vishwato Jagat It contains the complete essence Astobham Doesn't create any agitation, anavadyam, sutram, sutra, vishto, vidhu. This is the definition of sutra. That small key word opens a huge vista of knowledge. Maharshi Patanjali does not give a long explanation. Very, very precise. But that needs to be opened up. In today's times, we can call it as we need to unzip it. 
it is a zipped information and since it is zipped everybody perhaps cannot even make sense of it our job over here is to unzip it understand it but understanding itself is not sufficient i know i should not do something which is not good but my mind goes there i can't help it i know i should do something good my mind does not allow me it keeps taking me in the opposite direction so therefore understanding alone is not sufficient every addict knows that the addiction is not good for himself or herself but cannot help oneself and is willingly unwillingly also dragged into the addiction and here we are actually dealing with the mind itself it says that yoga begins where psychology ends why does it say that psychology tries to understand the mind what yoga does is actually look at the complete dimensions of the mind and looks at it from top from the view of the self so it gives a beautiful overview and then step by step maharshi goes in and explains every aspect you can say that it is the indian treatise on the mind the various dimensions various aspects everything is covered but with a very specific goal how do i transcend this mind that is what is the aim and to be able to achieve that aim <clears throat> maharshi has chapter chapterized this treatise in four parts gurudev swami satyanand ji has called this treatise as four chapters of freedom what is freedom freedom is my ability to do as i want as i deem appropriate now tell me am i really free to do what i want or am i bound by my habits by my idiosyncrasies by my conditionings by my preconceptions i am bound by that the moment i see somebody who i have bad interaction with in the past perhaps he has insulted me i am immediately tense i have already colored my perception towards that person how can i say that i am unbiased i see somebody from whom i expect something my perception has changed how can i say i am unbiased i cannot say i am not biased and when i am biased i don't even know i am getting biased how can i say i am free if i want to be free then it is essential that these biases need to be ironed out that is what yoga is all about ath yoga anushasanam this is that discipline it is not just a philosophy it is a discipline to be implemented and inculcated in our lives and the first chapter of freedom defines what samadhi is what the mind is and what is the ultimate goal when you are trying to transcend the mind because when we want to move ahead then it is essential i need to know where am i directed to if i don't even know where i am headed to then i will be moving around like a headless chicken so first it is very essential to have a very clear picture of what the goal is how it actually appears to be and after the goal is clear then you have sadhan path then you have to actually make the steps towards going to it 
I need to go towards my destination. And my destination is Delhi. Oh, wonderful. I have known everything about Delhi. I have known everything about the path. But if I never actually walk that path, it's never going to work. Sadhan path tells us how to walk that path. Now, when you walk that path, there are indications. If you are coming closer to the destination or going away from the de destination, and those insights which come, as you come closer and closer and closer, there are changes which take place within us. Now, these changes are spoken of in the third chapter, the Vibhuti Pad. What differences take place when we walk this path towards the self? And after that happens, then ultimately Kaivalya Pad. Oh, when you reach the destination, what happens? Is Samadhi everything? No. Going beyond is what is needed. So, in this way, very systematically, Maharshi changes the tack every chapter wise, takes us in. Now, these are not sutras which need to be memorized and forgotten. Perhaps to write in the exam or to discuss with somebody or to score brownie points with somebody. No. These are sutras by which we can make a change in our life. Because the problems which we face are the problems due to our mind. When Swamiji had set off in 56, when his guru, Swami Shivanandji, gave him the mandate to spread the message of yoga from door to door and shore to shore. At that time, Swamiji said, let me actually find out why my guru has asked me to teach yoga and not Vedanta. Because Vedanta is considered as the epitome, the pinnacle. So why not Vedanta? Why yoga? So when he actually went around with the people, he said, well, I realized that the problems which mankind is facing today is because of an untrained mind. It is the cause of all problems. And the best antidote to an untrained mind is yoga. That is the crux. Perhaps I don't want samadhi. Perhaps I don't want kaivalya. Most of us anyways are not going to be able to achieve it in this lifetime. So, does it mean that what I am studying is useless? No, it is not. It is very useful because we all are grappling with the mind. And when we are grappling with the mind, we just don't know where it is going to hit us next. I want a job. I want to excel in a job. I want to do good in a sport. I want to do good wherever. Excel. But I am unable to. Why? Because of my mind. How can I harness this mind, train this mind so that I can achieve my goals in life better. For us, that is the objective of yoga. And when we start befriending the mind, then we start working with and then slowly and slowly and slowly we start going inwards and inwards and then the higher goals of yoga start coming in. But for the moment, our aim is to harness the mind to improve the creativity of the mind, to harmonize the mind so that there is harmony between the head, the heart and the hands. I think something, I say something, I feel something, I do something totally different and I am continuously agitated. It is just like your car. The four wheels of the car, they are out of alignment and you try to drive the car. What is going to happen? Either you meet with an accident or there is a great wear and tear. The tires wear off, the bearings go, the heat comes up and the car breaks down. That is what we are facing. 
So first thing is we need to bring all of these back into alignment. And the moment we bring it back into alignment, then we suddenly see that the ability of the car suddenly exponentially rises. And now we can do whatever we want with the car. We can reach whichever destination. That is the first goal for us. But if that is the first goal, I know that I have to ultimately reach Delhi. But to reach Delhi, I need to take a train. And once I take the train, then I need to go to the first station. Pahla padav. The first halt. And we are heading towards the first halt. My focus at the moment is this first halt. It is not the ultimate destination because it is too far away. Sometimes it is even difficult for me to comprehend that. What is working for me is the first halt, my first milestone. No problem. The Swadhyaya Satra series aims at allowing us to understand this and allowing us to know how we can implement these tools in our life. What it means to me. How does it make a change in my life? I am the center point. Yoga in itself might be a great subject. So what? If it does not help me make a change in my life, it has no value in my life. A submarine is a wonderful piece of engineering marvel. But if I never want to go underground and reach some other destination under the sea, it has no value for me. So, I need to be able to relate to this. That is what we are going to do. We are not just going to read. It's so easy. What we will be doing is we will be utilizing the Mantra Shastra. These are in Sanskrit. Sanskrit is also known as Deva Bhasha. Sanskrit is that language which generates vibrations. And even if you do not intellectually understand this, you can start making sense of it. Not by intellectual understanding, but also through a deeper sense of perception. So therefore, my take on this is that we need to pick up one or two sutras every day and try and ruminate over them. You chant the mantra. Atha yoga anushasanam Atha yoga anushasanam Atha yoga anushasanam Yoga chitta vritti nirodhaha Yoga chitta vritti nirodhaha Yoga chitta vritti nirodhaha and when you chant this, some sense, some information, some perception starts coming in within my mind. Atha, yoga, anushasanam. So what could it mean? I have to ponder over that. Don't even immediately rush to the meaning. Oh, Atha means now, therefore, yoga means the study of yoga, Anushasana means discipline. Oh, so Atha Yoga Anushasana means now therefore begins the study of the discipline of yoga. Oh, that's just an intellectual information. Have you pondered over it? No. So therefore, what I would like you to do is spend 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you have on every sutra, every day. One sutra or two sutras only. And Every day, you ponder over those sutras. You will start making greater sense and it will start giving you an idea of why that is said and how it has an impact in your life. What is the relevance in your life? And your take on the thing. Once you have your take on the thing, then open the book up and read about it. I would recommend the book the Four Chapters of Freedom by Gurudev Swami Satyananji. This is a beautiful book. Beautiful explanation is given. 
So if you want more about the explanations, you can look up in this book. But please remember, the book is only a tool. We need to work out this way. It needs to be internalized. Chant it three times. Let that mantra sink in. What is the meaning which comes up? Think about it. Ponder about it. You have a perception. You have a conception. You have an idea. You have an understanding. Once you have developed your understanding, then please open it up and see. Either in the book or as we will be working over here. Every Sunday, 6.30 to 7.30 or slightly more if the topic is not completed. We will pick up one sutra. Chant it multiple times. Spend a few moments pondering over it. Then we go understanding the meaning of it. And I would suggest that during the week, use the same five or six or seven sutras and ruminate over them for the entire week. Next week, Sunday, we will have the next set of sutras. Pick them up. Understand them. We, can, we will do this together. And during the week, you spend 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you have on them. And if you want, I would suggest you actually make notes of this. These notes are more useful for you. It will tell you what it is meaning to you and what it changes in your life. What shifts you need to do in your life. These are things which it will tell you. And you will see that over the next three months, we will actually develop a deeper understanding. We will understand what we need to do. We are so engrossed in the world outside that we hardly try to know the world inside. This practice allows us to actually start understanding the world inside. Making sense of it. And how I can maneuver my path in that mess which is there inside. That is what the Swadhyaya Satra is actually about. And we will not stop at the third chapter. After the third chapter, like what we have done in the earlier ones, we did not just start and do all the four chapters. We did the first chapter of Samadhi Pad. Then we understood about Tattva Bodh. Then we did the second chapter, Sadhan Pad. The remainder of Tattva Bodh. Because Yoga and Vedanta, they are two sides of the same coin. Until and unless you don't understand one, the other does not make complete sense. In the same way, we will speak about Vibhuti Path. And after that, before we go into Kaivalya Path, we will be thinking about and studying about Bhakti. Swami Satyananda Ji has mentioned that Bhakti is the yoga of this century. And what is Bhakti? We think yoga is asan pranayam. But Maharshi doesn't think that. Maharshi says, what is yoga? Yoga ha chitta vruddhi nirodha ha. Then he says, tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam vruddhi sarupya mirtaratra. And he has con he has summarized the entire treatise in four sutras. And then he explains them further. Decodes everything. We find out that asan pranayam is just a minuscule part. What Maharshi is speaking is actually a method of perception, a method of understanding and method of refining ourselves. A way of living life. You have a philosophy. You apply that philosophy in your life and 
what are the difficulties which come and how do you solve them? All of it is mentioned. Of course, it is in a compressed form. You need to know how to uncompress it. Just by reading the sutra, you will get some intellectual information. But the complete unfoldment will not take place. For unfoldment, we need to undergo this practice. The same way, we will be looking at bhakti. Maharshi Narad, Devarshi Narad, he composed the Narad Bhakti Sutras, explaining what bhakti is and how we achieve that. And after that, we will go into Kaivalya Pada. So that is how we will be undertaking this journey. For us, Swadhyaya is a journey which we started last year. And we are still walking that path. It's a path which we have to undertake the whole life. So this is how the Swadhyaya Satra series will continue. It will be every Sunday 6.30 to 7.30 India time of course. And during the week the recording will be available to you and you can uh, read that. You can hear it. You can look it up and most importantly please think over, ponder over, try to understand, try to make sense what it means to you. Now what it means to me is not the ultimate because my perception is still faulty and that's why you need a baseline. Whenever you do any test, it is always checked against the reference point. If the reference is not taken, everything goes false. That's why the reference is there. The meanings given by the saints, the experienced masters, the realized masters, they have a great significance. We have only perhaps tried to understand the intellectual meaning of these sutras. But the masters, they have understood the hidden meaning and they have brought it out. So when I have thought about it, now let me see what do the masters say. Oh, this is a difference of opinion. Don't say that, oh, this is my opinion. I am still not good enough to have an opinion. I am still learning. So you Adjust it with that. Oh, this is what I need to change. And that is how we make the change. The Swadhyaya Satra series is a means towards self-improvement. It is not a means towards cramming the information in the mind and making an intellectual practice. No. Intellectual practice is one tool. Main aim is making a change within. So this is how we will be going ahead with the Swadhyaya Satra series and I have purposely kept it at a very slow pace. Within one week or even within one day, we can just read the entire book and be done with it. But then we will not be able to absorb we will not be able to assimilate. We will not be able to integrate it within ourselves. But the aim, idea, hope is to be able to integrate these principles in our life. Implementing takes time. If within three months we can implement everything, then within three months, everybody is going to achieve Kaivalya or nine months or one year. No, that's not so easy. Implementing takes a lot of time. They say bar bar muni jatana karahi antarama api avatanahi. Saints, sages, sadhus spent lifetimes making this effort yet they don't reach the goal. The path is long and arduous. But then we have to make a beginning somewhere. And when we make the beginning, we never know 
we might get some bonus points and just move further ahead. That is a land of exploring. So this is how we plan to move ahead in Swadhyay. And if you have any doubts, any questions, I would like to clear them. After which, the details, uh, you know, what we are going to do, how we are going to do, all those will be dealt with also. So if anybody has questions, you can unmute yourself and ask or put it in the chat box. Uh, Swamiji, Namo Narayan Vishad. Namo Narayan. Yes. So, Swamiji will be going by sutra by sutra or it will be an overview of that particular uh, father? No, 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 no. Sutra by sutra. Sutra by sutra. We will have one sutra. We will have the... Uh, we will chant the sutra. Then we will look at the Sanskrit meaning of the sutra, of each of the, you know, word in there and what it means. And a little bit of an explanation. Thank you. Samaji, one more question. I mean, let's. Uh, why? Why did you choose Sama Vibhuti as the first to start with, and not the sequential? No, no, no. I did not choose uh, Vibhuti Pad as the first. We have already done uh, Samadhi Pad and uh, Sadhan Pad. Oh, we have also oh, done Tattva Bodh uh, in two parts. So that is a journey which we undertook last year. Mm -hmm. And for people uh, who have not been a part of that, I have. Uh, I am also going to have one entire session for Samadhi Pad, one entire session for uh, Sadhan Pad, where we will be revising each of the sutras. Of course, we will not be going into the details of the meaning, but we have the sutra, we will chant it, we will have the meaning, understand it, and move ahead. Whoever is interested, uh, they can refer to the earlier recordings. They can get a request for those recordings and take that. Right. So, what we will now be doing is that um, this we will be having the sessions on a different uh, platform. It will not be on this link. The link which we have had today is the link uh, for the introduction for understanding how we are going to walk this path. The actual sessions will be on a slightly different link. Once you register for the sessions, then we will be sharing the details of the link and uh, the recording will be available to you so that you can uh, you know go over it uh, we will be starting with next sunday we will be starting with the revision of samadhi pad the sunday after that we will be doing the revision of sadhan pad and after that we will be starting vibhuti pad and we will be going sequentially. We, I will also look at the availability of time. And if time permits, then every Sunday, we will also quickly revise what we did last su Sunday. So that way, you have listened to five sutras or six sutras or seven sutras. During the week, hopefully, you have spent some time ruminating over them. In the following week, we quickly go through those sutras, chant it once so that the understanding is deepened and the link is created and maintained for the understanding of the next sutras. And this way, we will be uh, starting next Sunday and we'll be con continuing for almost 13 or 14 more Sundays and we'll be completing on 19th of May. Vibhuti Pad will complete on 19th of May. 
After Vibhuti Pad, we will undertake Narad Bhakti Sutras. After Narad Bhakti Sutras, then we go into Kaivalya Pad. And this is how we will be going step by step, discussing about it, understanding it. And if you have any doubts, any questions, I am always available. Uh, you can send me the messages. There is, There will also be some forums which will be available. And uh, we are thinking about giving you some assignments so that you can actually understand yourself better. And you will need to submit these assignments. I will also be creating a forum where you can discuss about this very specifically. So that is how we will be proceeding. Chaya ji, can you, I think most of uh, the people here, they have the link for the registration, but can you just uh, for the reference, put the link for the re uh, registration in uh, the chat box so that everybody has the link? Uh, yes, I will do it. <laughs> I will also be forming a separate WhatsApp group of all the registered participants so that all the information about this uh, uh, Swadhyay and any details I will be sharing in that uh, WhatsApp group. And after the Swadhyay is over, we can dissolve that group. Swamiji, every day I'll be going to have one sutra. So by the end of one week, we'll have four or five sutras together. Uh, uh, depending, I, I, I will be clubbing them together uh, based on the uh, relevance of the sutra. So between five to seven sutras every week. So we will be... So this Sunday, uh, we will uh, have the set of five or six or seven sutras which so one of them you can uh, think about every day so one sutra a week six sutras six days we complete seven day we take the next lot so uh, that way or you can have one sutra next day you have two sutras third day you have three sutras because that way you are revising the previous sutras and you are understanding the link and relation relevance and relation between the previous and the next so both ways are uh, okay. You have to find your comfort. Uh, 